I know everyone could use an extra week or two to decompress. Players, broadcasters, fans, maybe get a, a week on the beach. Whatever it takes, but you don't have it. Because of the peculiar situation we are in, the leagues have either begun or will begin this weekend. We'll all get very excited, but it's a lot of football, soccer. But I'm not complaining. I know you're not complaining. And uh, there's a lot of ways we can look at it. But here on The Soccer OG, subscribe. Hey, have you checked out my Lionel Messi video? Check it out. I really thought it was some good work on my part. Also, The Soccer OG podcast with Marisa Du. We'll talk about the subject I'm about to hit. Also a little bit more Lionel Messi, but check it out. You'll laugh, you'll cry. You'll actually cry more than you'll laugh, but it's there for your viewing pleasure. Hit the subscribe button while you're here. Thank you very much. Appreciate all the new uh, subscribers, the new followers, whatever you want to call it. Subscribers sounds much better. So let's get into what we will call the Americans preview in Europe. Americans abroad, we're previewing what they're going to do in Europe and it's very exciting. So the Gold Cup ended and what I've told, and I said this to Marisa Du in the podcast, every week there's two or three new exciting items for U.S. soccer. that all goes into the big pot for the U.S. men's national team and qualifying and winning the World Cup one day, obviously. Doesn't feel as far-fetched as it did a few weeks ago, right? I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it doesn't feel so crazy. Maybe a little crazy. Just this week, we have seen uh, Josh Sargent make, what, an $11 million transfer from Werder Bremen to a Premier League club in Norwich, Daniel Farka coaching it, a very exciting team. It scores a lot of goals. He has an opportunity to play a lot there. We also had uh, Conrad De La Fuente, who was brought in by Marseille. He has started the league opener. He contributed. And we also had uh, Brendan Aronson. So all these guys adding it to the pot, add it to the list, write it down. It's very exciting. But we're going to look at what's going to happen with the key players. It really is all good news. A couple items of concern, but we... We digress, shall we not? Uh, I'm going to start, let's start with Josh Sargent. This is an exciting move. We wonder if he can score it in the Premier League. He has Timu Puki to overcome. Norwich were in the Premier League, went down, came right back up. It's a really good club. Uh, when I think of Norwich, I think of Alan Partridge and that episode where he was with the farmers in that part of the world. And um, it's a... Uh, it's a very good spot for him. I like it. I like it a lot. We were, we were hoping to get a striker, an American striker in the Premier League. We were thinking maybe Daryl DK. We'll hold off on that. But Josh Sargent, if he can get goals here, it's really a game changer for him. He's going to play. You don't spend that kind of money if you're Norwich in particular, where so many teams haven't spent money if he's not going to get it. Let's talk about Conrad uh, De La Fuente then. Uh, he was at Barcelona. He was kind of lost in the pack. Um, no, no shame in that, but he's come to Marseille, Jorge Sampaoli's putting a nice team together, he played in all the build-up, you can tell his teammates like him, and he was involved in a comeback victory for La OM, La OM, to see uh, them through, and now Conrad De La Fuente is putting his hand up to maybe make that World Cup qualifying squad. He's going to get games, French League's going to be fun, we expect Lionel Messi to arrive there, and uh, Marseille, PSG, that's the, one of the big fixture there in France. And it looks like Conrad De La Fuente is going to feature there. Serginho Dest, his former teammate, obviously going through a seismic shift with Lionel Messi leaving Barcelona. But I don't hate the fact uh, that there's a new circumstance here. Playing with Lionel Messi is fantastic, but it comes with, you know, it comes with a lot of baggage as well. He can start to... He can express himself now a little bit more with Barcelona. He has played in all the friendlies thus far. He has started. I don't expect that to change. He played in the most recent, uh, it was for a trophy, the Joan Gamper against Juventus. So Serginho Dest is going to play and be a regular for Barcelona. All this for the beginning of the season. Very cool as well. Weston McKinney. Lesser degree, Juventus, he has been in that lineup. We expect him. There might be some rotations. But Weston McKinney continues to grow in that Juventus role. And you know he's a really important player. So we'll continue to see his development. And you will see also that these are all big clubs. 
We knew that about the U.S. team. We knew that about these U.S. players. And the list continues to grow. Remember, it was Polisic, then Polisic and McKinney. And now we'll see about others like Brian Reynolds, uh, Chris Richards. These are guys that could take a big step towards being uh, players that you can rely on. And, and, what I, and, and what I really truly believe is that so many players are in the mix. It, the high tide raises all ships, right? Because everyone wants to be on that World Cup squad. Everyone wants to be on the World Cup qualifying squad. You're going to have incredible competition. It's going to be an incredible spirit. It's going to be a tough team to crack as the list goes on. Gio Reyna playing a bit of a different position in the midfield, a little bit deeper, but he still connects with Erling Haaland, who's still there. This is a great time for him to be with Borussia Dortmund. It certainly appears that he is going to be a featured player. They love him there. This is Gio Reyna's time, and that positional shift may open the door for others when it comes to the national team there. He played in the, and he excelled in their opening DFB Pokal game, the German Cup. And I think we'll see much more from Gio Reyna when the Bundesliga starts this weekend. Do you see a trend here? It's good news, good news, good news. Zach Steffen played the Community Shield, played very well. This is one of the concerns because that's probably it. Ederson's going to be the number one. He will get some appearances here and there. Zach Steffen's not going to start at Manchester City. He really has to find another club so that he can get some games and certainly play for the U.S. team in a bigger picture. You know he can do it, and he's going to start. When Greg Berhalter comes along, remember you have the three games in September, he's probably going to be the number one, but with those three games, maybe Matt Turner, maybe Ethan Horvath slips in there to get at least a game. I think this competition is wide open, and Matt Turner proved that uh, you can rely on him after what he did in the Gold Cup. But Zach Steffen has to get games. We'll see if somehow... There is an outlet for that. We don't know that just yet. Obviously, Manchester City are going to have a lot of fixtures. They want two goalkeepers, and I feel that Pep Guardiola thinks that he can rely on Stefan. Got to get games, though. Brendan Aronson has knocked it out of the park. We saw these highlight reel uh, moments against Barcelona when Messi was, uh, was still with the club, and he... He did really well, and he's played every Salzburg game. They are already well into their league. He's played and started every game. Brendan Aronson's star, I think, out of all of these players, has risen the highest since we started talking about this, uh, since he made the move, really. Let's just put it there. So middle of the summer, he's come in. He has made the biggest inroads. We know Caden Clark's heading to Leipzig. Tyler Adams at Leipzig, he has been playing in every game in the preseason in the German Cup, so expect him to lock things down and be the entry point for more Americans at that club. All good news. All good news. You know where I'm getting at that. So I think we've covered everyone here, with one exception. Christian Pulisic. And this is the one where you hold your breath because he's playing for the best club in Europe, so to speak, Champions League winners a team that has just added to the coffers in the offseason, most notably bringing in Romelo Lukaku, who should take minutes away from Christian Pulisic, or you put him into that group of players with Kai Havertz and Timo Werner and Hakim Zayak, and who is going to put Tammy Abraham, who is going to be the odd man out? You get the feeling after the way the season ended, it's going to be Pulisic, they played him as a right wing back in some of the preseason games. He's playing a little bit, not as regularly. Like Zach Steffen, if he's not going to play at Chelsea, he needs to get a loan or get somewhere where he will. No shame in that. Chelsea could win the Premier League this year. I think they'll be there again at the end for the Champions League. Thomas Tuchel has... Uh, just reform this team, and you can't take anything away from him. I wish Pulisic had a spot there. I think he's earned it, but hey, there's just so many positions available. So Christian Pulisic, and you know, I immediately think of Jesse Lingard, who wasn't getting those minutes at Manchester United, went to West Ham, which is my club, could be an interesting spot for Pulisic, got on a loan, and it's great for 
was great for Manchester United because you put pressure now for West Ham to buy Jesse Lingard. I'm not saying Pulisic goes to West Ham, but he could have a similar effect to a team that needs a player like that if he is just a luxury player. At Chelsea, playing that weird... Playing out of that position told me he's on the outside looking in. Now, there is an opportunity for him to just put it all on the line and come out gangbusters and take us position. But I thought he did that in a lot of ways last season. He was a wee bit cons- inconsistent, but so were other players there. Obviously, Mason Mount was the exception, so consistent and maybe the, the, the most least expendable player. Uh, that Chelsea have right now, which is quite a testament to that young man. But Christian Pulisic, we wait and see. Everything else is coming up roses. All the key players look like they are going to feature or be at least part of a 15-man rotation for these teams. Zach Steffen, Christian Pulisic. And then we wait to see who's next because there's going to be someone next because it's always happening. Uh, Joe Scally. Played for Borussia Mönchengladbach, former New York City FC. Maybe he's the next. Caden Clark, when he gets over to Leipzig, maybe he's the next. Maybe Daryl DK. Gianluca Busio is heading to Venezia. Sam Vines is in Belgian football. All of it's good. And for Christian Pulisic and Zach Steffen, it's to their best interest. And they're, they're going to be featured guys. But if they want to stay here, because the bar keeps going higher. So we'll keep an eye on that. But it's an exciting time to support U.S. players in Europe. It's not one or two. Look at this list. There's double-digit players that will be in the Champions League. And we have more guys in all the major leagues. The Soccer OG. Subscribe. Check it out. Check out the pod. Let's go. September spawned a monster. Bring it.